हरि ओम नमस्तेभ्यः नमः नमो नमः सो वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग द प्रेयर फर्स्ट क्लास ऑफ द लॉन्ग टर्म क्लास आई हैव गिवन सम ब्रीफ डिस्क्रिप्शन अबाउट द क्लास सेवरल पीपल हैव आर येट टू जॉइन the people here near ashram a uh, lot of them are attending satsanga so nobody is nobody none of the registrants are here in the ashram because there is satsanga starting at 6:30 uh, in bethlehem tickets on the door ha okay thanks for registering for the course and uh, welcome all thank you first some ground rules uh we have formed a whatsapp group whether everybody joined the link or not quite a few haven't joined the whatsapp uh, group yet but everybody has gotten the link two different emails one email giving the link to join the whatsapp group if there is any change you know uh, class cancellations or some information we have to send fast whatsapp is better than uh, emails and everybody has got the emails one email giving the whatsapp link and other email giving the link for joining the class as well as if somebody missed the class and wanted to go back then uh, access to a google uh drive where we put all the recordings and the uh, pdf copies of textbooks any homeworks and other reference material all those things will be there in the google drive so the second link is uh, for the google drive so these two links are sent in a different email and these two links to join the join the zoom meeting as well as the one for uh going back for any recording other references those are put on the whatsapp group header also so that you don't have to remember the email so you can just go back to the whatsapp group header so there will be there are three related links where you can access and uh, the google drive link uh, we have subfolders in that one for recording one for the textbooks one for reference and one miscellaneous for uh, storing things as we go further some ground rules uh i am not a very tech savvy person so if something happens in zoom if there i think there are enough number of people in the in the in the in the class who are pretty tech savvy and zoom savvy also so if some technical glitches happen happen one of you have to one or more of you have to help out uh <clears throat> most likely this is the only class i am having face to face after that it most the time is all uh, screen uh, screen sharing okay uh <clears throat> so if anybody has uh, first of all it is better everybody stay on mute so that we won't have any echoes and things like that and if during the class somebody has a short question or anything then uh you can raise your hands in the that uh, reactions button below below or above and uh if more than one people raise a question simultaneously then i will uh, pick the your name one at a time and then you can unmute speak once you are done then mute yourself and the hands down the raised hands down and uh, one at a time i will answer all the questions if you cannot if i cannot answer because of the time in the during the class then we can discuss either in one on one whatsapp so can you can post those questions so can i can answer and if you think it is something we can discuss for the whole whole class 
you know something related to that class topic then you can put it on the general uh, whatsapp group and uh, if it is okay to stop and raise uh, raise hands and uh, get it clarified during the class if the question can wait till the end of the class then at the last few minutes of the class we will save for question and answer okay if it can wait if it is related to the per a uh, precise point we are discussing then it is better to clarify that right away okay and uh, <clears throat> or if you want to call me later talk about a specific uh, point you can do that also or you can email so there are three ways of contacting me other than the general class uh, whatsapp group or email then this from the background informations you have provided i think in this class there are people from varying backgrounds some are beginners some are intermediate and quite a few had applied and uh, they had mentioned that they cannot read or write devanagari give me one second so i'm calling hello okay i lost him <clears throat> okay can you hear me yes okay we can hear you can okay uh so i was mentioning that there are students at uh, different uh, levels of sanskrit knowledge and suppose there are multiple people are asking the same at the asking a question at the same time and if you think you know a little more then let the other person ask the question give the others a chance okay there are people who said they are basic intermediate and uh, this is a basic course but some people have attended other courses either from the same book or uh, different different uh, based on different books so if uh, multiple people ask questions and if you think that uh, it is better other people raise the question please do the, do so as a courtesy uh there is all i have for now as a general ground rules anybody has any questions or suggestions you can post it in the group okay so we, we lost your video we just have your audio stuck oh i can see the video and my video is on i can see the video of oh. this video jagdish's video i can see i should be here yes i don't know whether it is the whether it is the internet in the old temple hall i am using that one tendi ha ji your video is frozen that's all oh i see wait for the program to respond to me it's like uh, just a blank screen i don't know how it is but hmm no worries you can continue and maybe we'll see if it comes back okay audio is clean right audio is clear yes okay uh <clears throat> any any other questions about the textbook for those who are not familiar with the medha michika we are using enjoyable samskrita grammar it is a three volume series 
written by Medha Michika, who's a student of Pujo Swamiji and a very good uh, Sanskrit student, teacher, author of Sanskrit as well as uh, Vedanta. So these three books will be the textbooks and we will be starting with volume two. Okay, volume two deals with the pronunciation and Sandhi. We will start with that and then go to volume one, which is the structure of the language or the nouns and verbs and the different uh, forms that are used, all those things. And then the volume three is what we call as the derivatives, how the de different words in Samskrita are derived from their base units. My Jagdish, I'm missing you. Are you on? Can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. You can unmute. Yes, we can. Uh, in that case, if there is no other questions about the course, uh, yeah, I have one textbook, three, ah. the three textbooks, which order we are going to go. We might at times go between uh, volume, we start with volume two and then in between might go between uh, volume two and volume one. Uh, volume three, of course, will come, come at the end. Now, in addition to the textbooks, there will be two reference books, which is one is Ashtadhyayi, which is the uh, list of Panini Sutras, and the uh, Dhatu Kosha which is a list of the verb roots. And all these, all these things are, uh, PDF copies of all of these are available in the Google Drive. Let me share my screen. I think there are two, uh, Jagdishji, there are- start the Jagdishji. There are two people, uh, Adam's ultimate yeah. iPhone it has a video on and Kiran Virangama's iPhone also has a video on. Uh, and also Preeti Rajana, Rajan has a video on. If they close it, then it will be very clear and, and, and the voice will also be clear. Okay. I can see the pictures or the Screen, yeah. not, not the camera, pictures of three. No, no, the video, you, you have to camera. block the video. You have to okay. click on the start video and it will lo lock it up. Oh my God. Okay. Thank you. Okay. It's good. There are people who lo know a lot more about Zoom meetings. So good help. Thanks, people. Okay, so uh, we will start all our classes with a set of prayers. I will uh, share the set of prayers so that uh, everybody knows most of, the, uh, most of the prayers are very common prayers. Share screen. this way.
Give me a second. Give me a second. Okay, can you see the screen with the prayers? See you. Yes. Yes, yes. yes Mahoda. Okay. So th this is this will be the prayers we will follow. Okay, we will start with the Ganesha prayer. And there's a specific reason why I picked this Ganesha prayer, where there's hundreds of them available. And then Saraswati, Brahma, Sahana Bhavatu. And the other two prayers we will add when we get some uh, when we learn a little more about panini and his uh, sutra logics okay right now it those prayers may not make any sense so let's start with the prayers you can uh, join on mute i think everybody knows all these uh, first four prayers on the screen and then we will uh, come back Okay. Om Agajanana Padmarkam Gajanana Maharnisham Anekadam Tambhaktanam Ekadantam Upasmahe Saraswati Namastubhyam Varadekama Rupini Vidyarambham Karishyami Siddhir Bhavatume Sada Guru Brahma Guru Vishnuhu Guru Devo Maheshwaraha Guru Sakshat Parabrahma Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Ubunaktu, Sahabir Yankarabahai, E. Jasvina Vadita Mastuma Vid Vishabahai, O Shanti Shanti Shanti. Okay, so this is the prayer we will uh, recite for every class, and a uh, little later we will add the grammar related prayers and the Two prayers below on the screen. We will do that at the end of the class. Okay. Uh, Mr. Venkatachalam is raising hands. You have a question? Oh, yes, I did. Um, it, it, I think uh, you mentioned about using volume one and volume two. You have shared volume two in the in the Google Drive. Uh, yeah. And it's the only one. The, the volume one, one is not there. Yeah, I intentionally didn't put because, you know, it's so one, two, three, we are starting from the middle. So I thought we will start with that. And whenever I might refer something in volume one, then before that class, I will put it just to avoid confusion. I put only volume two because that is what we are going to start with. Okay. Okay. So, before going to the textbook, we will go through a set of slides. This is the first slide. As you can see, there are about 20 slides. These slides I made uh, for some short-term course for our uh, Arsha Vidya Midwest camp. We had uh, for, like a four or five years ago, it started. For that, uh, there I had only two classes during a long weekend. I had only two classes available. So I thought I will just make a few slides to highlight the importance of Sanskrita grammar and some of the interesting features about the uh, Sanskrita grammar compared to the grammar of any other language or the language as such. And uh, during our long-term camp, the fall camp, on uh, Brahma Sutra Bhashya here this last five weeks. 
uh, they asked me to take the Sanskrit class for these five weeks. So at that time, it was kind of a surprise. And I didn't prepare for a five weeks. So I started with this uh, set of slides. Then looks looked like uh, everybody liked it. So we will continue the in the same way, but I might spend a little more time because we have more time available. So the slides are about the importance of learning Sanskrit and some of its uh, distinguished distinguishing features. Okay, so let's go to. Okay, so as the as you can see. Let me go on to the slide show mode. As you can see, the slides is why learn Sanskritam, why Sanskritam, and if you have to say that in Sanskrit itself, that will be Kimartam Sanskritam. So we had a set of prayers. And we do the prayers all the time. Do we know the meanings of the prayers, even the basic ones? It is better to pray with, when we know the meaning. And uh, this Agajanana Padmarkam, I chose that Ganesha prayer for a specific reason. As we go along, uh, we will choose some prayers to show the importance of the topic at that time. And uh, towards the end, when we go into the third book, towards the end of the third book, we should be able to do all the steps necessary to understand the, a verse given in Sanskrit. Okay, that is the uh, objective or hope. And uh, at the end of these slides, I have done that for this Agajana Padmarkam uh, prayer. So I hope that you will appreciate that. And that will be kind of a, a driving force for keeping the inst uh, interest on the course. So why Sanskritam? It is, as I think everybody knows, all the students, uh, registrants for the course knows, Sanskrita is the oldest among the current available languages and the most continuously used. In the, in the world, there are other languages which are kind of uh, in hibernation for few decades or centuries, and then they were resurrected. And Sanskrit was not like that. It was active in some parts of the world or of the Indian subcontinent all the time. Even now, there are a few places, I think one in uh, Madhya Pradesh and one definitely in Karnataka, where people do their day-to-day -to -day, day -day transaction in Sanskrit only, irrespective of the caste, creed, religion level, or profession. Everybody uh, transacts in Sanskrit only. So. Even though in some places people say it's a dead language, it is not. Our Sanskriti or the culture lies on the Sanskritam language. And uh, this is generally common for some of the other languages also, but more so in the case of Sanskrit. The voc vocabulary of our thought and culture is based in Sanskrit. And uh, somebody said, as long as Bharat has Sanskritam, her Sanskriti is safe. And Sanskritam patitva susamskritaha bhave yuhu. We will be more cultured by reading, by learning Sanskritam. By the way, the word Sanskritam is well processed or refined Sanskritam. Okay. To illustrate the relationship between a culture and a language, 
generally. Can you adequately explain the things in a puja room in any other language other than Sanskrita or you know, some of the Indian languages which are based or uh, have a lot of words borrowed from Sanskrita? Uh, like, for example, can you adequately explain to a totally novice an item in our puja room in another language, say French or English or German? It's most likely, it is not possible unless you are culturally related to the things in those, uh, those objects in the puja room. It will be almost impossible to get the idea. Uh, even with the help of pictures, like a uh, common example I give is, how do you explain to someone who has never seen a puja, how do you explain him what an arati is? You can't say that it's a holy fire or that will be a homa or something. And if you say a holy lamp, then it will be, you know, we have a standing lamps, whereas Arati is not one of those. Generally, on either side of the Vigraha, we have two standing lamps with multiple wicks. So Arati is a similar thing, but it is a smaller one, and there are different types of Aratis with their own names. Only uh, <clears throat> and all those, all those names are most likely Sanskrit-derived words. So it is almost impossible to explain precisely the things we see in our puja room uh, without using a Sanskrit word. The language indicates, this is true for any language at uh, any time, language indicates the sophistication and the quality of the society, say 5,000 to 10,000 years ago, whenever this uh, Vedic uh, literature developed, and I think everybody, all Indologists, uh, Western Indologists also agree that Rigveda is likely the oldest written document which still exists. And uh, to give you an idea of the sophistication and the high thinking, even at uh, that millennia ago, I take, uh, I take one verse from the Rigveda or the one line from the Rigveda, which says, Ano bhudraha kratavo yantu vishwataha. Let noble thoughts come to us from every direction. So whatever the estimated age of the start of Rigveda, even at that time, the culture had such noble high thoughts to pray for that wisdom. The another reason for, I think for most people, this must be the reason, this I think is the reason for interest in learning Sanskrit language. All of our Puranas, whether it is a Shruti, Vedas, or Smriti, Ramayana, Mahabharata, etc., and Purana, so many of them. Not only that, which are kind of a religious or religious spiritual, other Vangmayas also, other uh, literature also was in Sanskrit, like maybe Vaidika related to Veda, Adhyatmika, we know about that. All the Puranas are originally written in Sanskrit. Not only that, even the law, even the practical sciences, laukika sciences, whether it is uh, uh, yoga or Ayurveda, Jyotisha, and uh, there were texts about uh, other branches of science, of course, mathematics, metallurgy, other engineering, all those things, and also all of the Sahitya like Kalidasa and all those great poets, all those Kritis, they're all originally written in Sanskrit. And uh, of course, translations 
will be available in other Indian languages or other uh, foreign languages also. But then in any translation, that's not only specific to Sanskrit or to other languages, even from other languages to Indian languages also, that is always a little bit will be lost in translation. So if you can read and understand Sanskrit, then you are very close to what the poet or the writer wants to convey to him. But if you are writing it through a translation, it may not be 100%. Also, all popular bhashyas and tikas on all the three of uh, the Vaidika literature, Shruti, Smriti, and Sutra, like uh, uh, all the bhashyas of, on uh, Upanishads, Shruti and uh, Gita bhashya on Smriti from Shankaracharya, and uh, bhashya on sutras, on the Brahma sutras, they're all only in Sanskrit. And uh, even the bhashyas are in Sanskrit, the original sutras is in Sanskrit, original is in Sanskrit, bhashya is in Sanskrit and tikas also in Sanskrit, and then comes a translations of the tika and bhashya in local languages. But the originals of all of these are in Sanskrit. You see a verse, word here, even Upadesha Saram found the need for translation to Sanskrit before gaining wider popularity. popularity. The reason I put that is because I made this presentation for the Midwest camp where the topic was Upadesha Saram. So that is why I just kept it there. So Upadesha Saram, I think the original was uh, written in Tamil by Ramana Maharshi, and then it was uh, translated into Sanskrit by Kavya Kanta Ganapati Muni. And that is when because of the translation into Sanskrit, I think it spread very fast within India and beyond India also. Okay, just to give you an idea about how large was the Sanskrit literature, just a Vedic bibliography. Somebody tried Mr. Aram Dandekar, uh, Maharashtrian, in 1960, he just collected all the bibliography, bibliography just being the reference, it may not take more than three lines on a text. So even that small, uh, few lines, it was about, it filled about 4,000 pages and he had to do that in four volumes. So there's so much extensive literature was available uh, even half a century ago. Okay, continuing about the importance Okay, if you are interested in Gita and Upanishads, I think most of the people in this uh, class are, because most likely you joined the class because of some connection with uh, Arshavidya or getting the newsletters or uh, weekly emails from Arshavidya office. That may be how you came, ac came across this course. So in the, if that is the case, you will definitely are interested in Gita and Upanishads because that is what is taught in the in this institute. So if you're interested in Gita and Upanishads, you need to learn and appreciate Sanskrit because the Vashyas and Tikas are in Sanskrit. That is why AVG, Arshavidya Gurukulam, has such high importance, collection of books, grammar experts, in-house and web classes on Sanskrit. And you will get a taste of the importance of Sanskrit in nearly all AVG classes. All Swamiji's generally highlight the importance of knowing some Sanskrit. To give you an illustration, I was one time, I 
when I was working, I used to go for uh, about 45 minutes walk during the lunch break. At that time, I used to hear some of the recordings. One time I was uh, uh, listening to Puja Swamiji's Drigdrishya Viveka. And somewhere in, I think, okay, there's uh, class three of the series of classes. Somewhere he came across a some grammar terminology. And then Swamiji went into Samskrita grammar and ten, uh, spent about 10 minutes on Samskrita grammar alone out of the 60 minutes before coming back to the subject he was discussing. So <clears throat> all of our Swamiji's are experts in grammar. They, whenever occasion comes, they point out the importance of knowing Samskrita in these kind of classes. Even if you are not associated with Arshavidya or not into study in the depth of Gita and Upanishad, still it will help you understand some of the simple prayers, appreciate the meaning of the Subhashitas. Uh, everybody is used to Subhashitas at some time or the other, especially in the, in the schools. And uh, if you know some Sanskrita, then basic knowledge of the rituals and of some of the mantras uh, we chant or we are asked to chant by the priest, that will be more meaningful when, once you know the meaning of the either the overall meaning of the verse and still better if you know the individual meaning and the collective, collective meaning of the whole verse. Uh, as an illustration, I think everybody knows that when you perform some ritual or a function, it may be a Upanayanam or Satyanayana Puja or some Graha Pravesha or a wedding and other ceremonies. A lot of times the priest does all the chanting, priest or priests do all the chanting. But once in a while, they will say, please say Mama, please say Mama. So... You say mama and maybe not all of the all of us knew the meaning of mama at that time. Okay, so in uh, once you attend some courses, not necessarily some stutta courses, but any courses in Arsha Vidya, you automatically you will know what the meaning of mama is because that word comes uh, in almost all the things we study here. So you will understand what that mama means. And I specifically put this uh, prayer verse later on in the slides, 21 or 22nd slide. We will analyze this common play prayer word by word and explain the individual words, what they mean, how they come about, how they are related to the other words in the words and all those things, so you'll appreciate uh, knowing these steps, how to understand verses. So I picked one of the one of those uh, common Ganesha prayers. We'll do that. Maybe it may take two or three classes to get that stage because we have uh, quite a few slides in between. Okay. So, Samsutta can be called as a universal language. It doesn't have a script of its own. So, you may write in any language, but only the pronunciation should be right in the sense that the language should have tools or implements to have the right pronunciation used in Sanskrit. The pronunciation is very important in Sanskrit because a slight mispronunciation can mean totally different things, sometimes opposite things. And uh, there's a page next where I have listed several examples where a slight mispronunciation, either because it is written in uh, English 
or it is not pronounced right, how it can uh, lead you to a totally undesirable meaning. There are several examples in some subsequent slides. Okay, so it can be written in any language. Brahmi, Devanagari, and uh, generally, most of the Indian languages have all the letters that are there, uh, all, the, all the aksharas that are used in Sanskrit language. But when it comes to some of the foreign languages, there may not be enough alphabets in that language to serve completely, like all the pronunciation of all uh, aksharas in Sanskrit. Give you an idea, in uh, English, we have only 26 letters, whereas in Sanskrit, we have the consonants alone, 33 consonants. And then there are vowels. The number of vowels might vary a little bit, depending on how deep you want to go. We'll talk about that number of letters, uh, number of uh, swaras, vowels, or vyanjanas, consonants, in later uh, in this slides. Okay, so if uh, you are learning Sanskrit through English, then this might happen. You know, if you are not a, uh, if you haven't learned Sanskrit or Hindi, because Hindi and uh, most of the Sanskrit texts share the same uh, lippy. So if you're learning it through another language, then that language should have some tools like uh, diacritic marks or things like that to suggest the right pronunciation. Okay, You can see a couple of words here with the diacritic marks, for example, Brahmi. So the A has a dash on top, that means the Akara, a uh, sound is long. So it's not bra, it's bra. Me, the I is long. So brahmi, devanagari. So this kind of diacritic marks have to be used when you have to write a Sanskrit word in English. Uh, all the books, as far as I know, even uh, smaller booklets, maybe not smaller book, but all the medium size and larger books published by Arsha Vidya, whether from here in US or uh, from uh, India, any Arsha Vidya publications, they almost always have one or two pages showing the pronunciation guidelines. So they give you a letter with the diacritic mark, and uh, then show an English word where that kind of a pronunciation is used. Okay, so that is about the lippy part or the, the letters used. And here in uh, Arsha Vidya, if any, any classes or the camps, they generally print handouts in Devanagari as well as another copy for those who are not well versed with the Devanagari. They also uh, print or uh, there will be copies available in English but with the proper diacritic marks. The chances of mispronouncing are very, very common. We see it all the time. There are different causes why you mispronounce a word. It may be an effect of your mother tongue borrowed into pronouncing Sanskrit words, or it can be effect of uh, English language or some other regional languages. Like uh, some of them I listed here, there may be others which I was not aware of, but these are some of the things I am aware of. Uh, this is not intended to any specific group, but this is, I think everybody knows that 
this kind of a difference in pronunciations are very common. Even the people speaking in uh, that language, once they're exposed to pronunciation, importance of pronunciation in Sanskrit, then they will uh, they will realize the handicap of having an effect of mother tongue or English on the Sanskrit word. Like for example. not pronouncing the last uh, because of the uh, effect of Hindi and English. Like, for example, uh, even though in Hindi, we write as Rama, the full Ma, Rama. But during pronouncing, you always pronounce Ram in Hindi. It's common to that language. Not that it is a fault of the language, but that is how the language is. The writing, there is no difference in the sense of, say, writing Rama and uh, Yoga and Krishna. So all of them, all the three end with A only. If you're writing in English, all of them will end with A. So the true right pronunciation, you have to pronounce the A at the end or the Akara at the end. But what we generally do, because of the effect of this Hindi and English, is you might say Ram, but when you, it comes to the Krishna, generally people pronounce Krishna, they don't say Krishna. And uh, when you come to yoga, they don't say yoga, they generally say yoga. Sometimes they make it long also, yoga. That is effect of some uh, English. So... Taking the A, uh, not pronouncing the A uh at the end is generally the effect of Hindi and English on sans Sanskrit pronunciation, whereas making it long is generally the effect of English. So that is what I mentioned here. Ram and this Rama is pronounced as Ram and Yoga is pronounced as if it is Yoga. And little tinge of O kara in, in in the place of a uh, in because of the effect of Bengali. If Bengali is your mother tongue, and uh, in uh, Sanskrit in uh, Tamil language, the group consonants are sometimes there may be one or two letters to indicate the first four of the group consonants. I just assume that everybody knows what group consonants is. It is ka ka ga ga nga is the ka group. Cha cha ja ja nya is the ja cha group. We'll talk about this a little more and in more detail when we come to the pronunciation part of the textbook also. Okay, so if the matching pronunciation is not available, for example, in English, may have to use special characters. You have to, you, you can use the available 26 characters and then use some extra marks on those characters to indicate a different variation of that letter in Sanskrit. So we'll have more details of that. There's a full slide to indicate all these uh, diacritic marks and their right pronunciation. We'll come to that. So if matching pronunciation is not available for any, uh, for example, in English, may have to use special characters with the diacritic marks. So we will have a slide on that. Okay. And then this, uh, the, one of the highlights of Sanskrit language is the most comprehensive architecture, the Paninian grammar, the structure of grammar, like uh, base starting from the basic building blocks, which are the verb roots. They're all based on uh, Paninian grammar. And from there, verb roots is generally where all the words we find in the language are derived. And this derivation has uh, the, the steps of them, steps of deriving these words from base rules according to certain sutras or sutras are similar to mathematical equations. So sutras, they're very logically arranged and such a logical architecture is very rare in uh, any other language. And so a lot of times uh, 
people might start learning Sanskrita for some of the reasons we mentioned earlier. But then once they look at this architecture, they may be so interested, they may tend to go deeper into the grammar aspect and uh, into Paninian grammar study. So very interesting uh, architecture. And uh, <clears throat> it's like more uh, mathematical and logical and it's very, very interesting once you get into Paninian grammar. And as all of us know, it, the Samskrita is the mother of all of our mother tongues. I think we will stop here because I think it is seven o'clock already. So we will uh, stop here and uh, continue from here in the next class. Let's do the concluding prayers. And then if there are any questions, we can uh, spend a few minutes uh, on question and answer. So the concluding prayers are Sarve Bhavantu till Sri Guru Bhyonam, as is shown in the slides here. Okay. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha, Sarve Santuni Ramayaha, Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu, Makascha Dukkha Bhagbhavet, Asatoma Sadgamaya, Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Mrityorma Amritam Gamaya, Om Purnamadav Purnamidam Purnam, at Purna Mudachate, Purnasya Purna Madaya Purna Mevava Shishate, Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyonamaha, Hari Om. Okay, I will stop sharing. Anybody have any questions? Yes. Are we recording this? Yes. Okay. Thank you. We are recording and uh, then maybe in a couple of hours once the when files are available, I will uh, post it on the uh, Google Drive. I have a question. Namaste. Yeah. Uh, Relationship of Sanskrit and Devanagari. I know Devanagari is the chosen script or lipi for Sanskrit. Did original Sanskrit have original script on its own or how no, did, uh... no I, I I don't think because in, in the in the Vedic time it was Karna Parampara, like a word of mouth. <laughs> and uh when the writing tools were available, likely Sanskrit, the uh, Devanagari was maybe more widely used. And some of the manuscripts may be in the Pali language uh, before the Devanagari. So it is not specific for uh, Sanskrit. Okay, so Vedas and all, it was it kept uh, uh, coming through generations orally. Through generation, then, yes, yes. And somebody yeah. decided to just put it on paper when they put it on paper the when the available. writing equipment were available paper and oh, pen writing were discovered okay, because you know, that, that is the reason why so much of importance is given to pronunciation because you know this importance of pronunciation is a lot more than uh, other languages because there is you know swaras also udata nudata all those things we will talk about that when we come to the letters so to maintain that the pronunciation has to be perfect. The teacher tells the students uh, and the student passes on or father tells the son and uh, children and they pass on to the next generation. The fact that all of our uh, Shruti, Smriti and some of the Purana literatures were intact, especially Shruti part, even with an intonation not missing, over these thousands of years, it was maintained. That is because of the importance of pronunciation they have given and passed on to the next generation. Okay, Hariya, thank you. Sanjay, I just have yeah. a question. I hear 
some say Arsha Vidya, some say Arsha Vidya. Which exactly is the right? Arsha Vidya and? Arsha Vidya. Arsha. I didn't hear the difference. Okay, Arsha, this we say Arsha Vidya Gurukulam, some say Arsha Vidya Gurukulam. Oh, okay. So it's that the it is between short or long A, it is long A. Long A, okay. That's okay. Good. Arsha. Arsha okay. is derived from the word Rishi. Uh -huh. Okay, so the language, Arsha Vidya is the knowledge that came from the Rishis. Arsha is derived from Rishis. So Arsha Vidya is the knowledge from the Rishis. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ji. Okay. If there are no more questions, we'll conclude for the day and we will meet on Thursday, same time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jagdish. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jagdish. Thank you. 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 Thank you